What are your memories of General Gray? Oh, I didn't meet General Gray until uh, I was stationed in Norway with NATO, and uh, he, which is a uh, the way he operated, he came over to NATO and visited that headquarters. It was the uh, in Norway, the northernmost uh, NATO headquarters, and uh, he came. He had troops committed to that area in the event of a war, and uh, he came over to take take a look himself and see what it was all about. And. Uh, uh, that's the first time I met him, and uh, that I that I can recall. But I'm sure I would have recalled any previous time, given his personality. So uh, that's I think an answer to that. Question. Absolutely. Well, tell me what what does General Gray's legacy mean to you as a Marine and as an American citizen? His legacy is operational. In my opinion, he was the one who moved the Marine Corps into a, a, a campaign uh, doctrine that uh, featured maneuver, and it was called maneuver warfare. And uh, the times that it was used in small wars. Uh, it proved extremely uh, effective, and uh, that I think will be his everlasting uh, thoughts, reputation, uh, whatever you want to call it. But um, his commandant, uh, his tour of duty as a commandant, was I think oriented mostly to concerning himself about combat operations and uh, obviously he did other things as well recruiting for example uh, uh, but uh, that I think will be his legacy and uh, it's unfortunate that I think we the Marine Corps may be getting away from it too far but, uh, well, tell me this then: what yeah. um, what core values of the Marine Corps do you think that he had promoted, and that personally inspire you? Oh, uh, core values. Yes, sir. Dedication. I would say that right off the top, and uh, you don't have to go much further than that, because when the commandant is dedicated to something in the Marine Corps. Uh, the Marine Corps uh, functions very well uh, to keep the uh, commandant happy. But, uh, um, what personal impact do you think that General Gray has had on you and the Corps? Oh, on me. As looking back on it, as as a uh, as a Marine, I was a Marine for 35 years, and uh, you know, General. Uh, General Gray had my attention, I'll put it that way. And uh, the impact he had on me was uh, everywhere I went that, that had combat orientation, uh, I was very, very careful to make absolutely certain that we were doing the right thing. Okay. Um, do you have any other special memories about um, General Gray, like personal, serious, or funny, that you oh. can tell about him? No, I, I don't. I don't. Say, I don't know. Okay, no, that's I don't, fine. That's I don't fine. have any. I, I, I don't want him to see something and get, <laughs> get, get annoyed with me. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. we've heard several of the funny things. I'll say that. Oh yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Uh, how, how is Jacksonville and Onslow County as the home to the Marines? How do you find it to be the home to the Marines? Well, I was stationed here for a year, and it was uh, a beautiful year. I was commanding general of uh, what was then the Second Force Service Support Group. Uh, 
and it was all a collection of things about which I knew nothing, and uh, uh, which is the God's truth, and uh, maintenance battalion, a medical battalion, all that sort of thing. But um, no, I uh, Camp Lejeune is, is uh, it's, it like Quantico, it's the backbone of the Marine Corps in, in, in many respects. And I don't mean to uh, to degrade uh, Camp Pendleton in California or anywhere else, but uh, no, that it's legendary in a sense, Camp Lejeune. Yeah. Indeed. Um, what you you've mentioned a little bit about General Gray's leadership. Um, what skills do you think were his top skills and how he performed leadership? Getting people to do what he wanted them to do and uh, being very, uh, he wasn't overbearing, domineering, or anything of that nature. Uh, people just wanted to keep him happy and uh, do what he wanted done because what he wanted done was uh, probably the right thing to do. <laughs>